Hey guys, my name's Lauren and in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you how to stop tang aggression in your tank and also seven different ways that you can set yourself up for success when you're adding a new tang into your tank. I'll also be sharing at the very end some tang myths that have just gone around that are just absolute rubbish. So I'm gonna be sharing those at the end as well. May or may not be able to see behind me, but I have a beautiful new tang that I've just added into my tank a few days ago. She is an absolute stunner. This right here is Joyce, my ring-tailed tang. She is absolutely stunning. And the biggest tang that I've ever bought. I've usually bought them, you know, small size, but this is the biggest one I've bought and she is just stunning. I'm absolutely in love. But that takes my total tang count in my tank up to five. I'm absolutely obsessed with tangs. Uh, I love the big fish. They've just got awesome personalities. So uh, it's definitely not gonna be my last tang. And I reckon after this tank, I'm gonna be going even bigger so I can have more tangs because I just love them so much. But before we begin, I'm curious, which tang did you have the most amount of trouble with? I know there's sort of stigmas around different types of tangs being more aggressive than others, um, but sometimes we might have a completely opposite uh, experience to that. So I'm curious as to which tang you've actually had the most trouble with. So leave it in the comments below the tang that you've had the most trouble with in your tank. Also, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe and to turn on the bell so that you're notified when I upload new videos. And also massive thank you to everyone that supported me along the way and for all of my subscribers and for your comments, it's just amazing. So thank you so much. Okay, so getting straight into the seven ways that you can set yourself up for success, adding tangs into your tank. Number one, make sure you feed really, really well. There's nothing worse than being hangry. And I know with our tangs, if they're hungry, they are definitely 10 times grumpier. So prepare yourself for more water changes if you're gonna have to feed more. I always like to make sure I keep an eye on the newcomer when it's food time and just make sure that they're able to get to food. Um, spread it out throughout the tank. Don't just dump it all in one section. You know, try and do it on the opposite ends of the tank. Feed directly in front of the newcomer as well. So, you know, they've got it coming straight to them. But especially with tangs, they love their food. They love their seaweed. So as well, if you're feeding nori or seaweed, two different clips on each end of the tank like I have here. I've got one up there and one up there. So they're not all having to come and fight over one piece of seaweed. If you put it on different ends of the tank, then they can feel comfortable going, okay, well, if the more dominant fish is going for that one, I'll go for the other one and they can eat in peace. But that's a great way to make sure we don't have any hangry fish in there and that they're all got a nice full belly and they're happy. I find that's the biggest thing with tangs is they eat a lot. So make sure you provide them with the best amount of food that you can. Try all different types of food as well. So I like to feed my tangs all different things to keep them nice and fat and healthy. So your seaweed, your frozen food. Um, also, if you get them from the same shop, find out what uh, dried food that they're feeding the fish already. That's sometimes great to get them eating at the beginning is to find out what the pet shop feeds them, get some of that food um, so they already feel comfortable there, you know, happy taking that food already so that's a great way to um, make sure that they start eating. Number two is places to hide so I know my tangs absolutely love having little caves and little crevices to go and hide and sleep in so sometimes it might even be a great idea like when I added in this new tang I actually added in a couple of rock structures on this side and this side. This seems to be a very hot property right here um, all the tangs love this section, so I thought I'll add a couple more rocks over here and a couple more rocks over here so it's new territory that the existing fish don't have any claim over so that they have a safe place to go to um, that isn't in the other fish's territory. So that's a great way to make sure they feel comfortable. Number three is to add them in with an acclimation box. So this is a clear box that you can hang on the side, obviously a slit through the side so that the water can flow through. It can help to put them in a box like that so that they can see each other, they can greet each other, but you know, there's that sort of fencing to protect the new fish. Sometimes that's all it takes is a few hours in a box like that where they can see each other but they can't actually get to each other. It makes the new fish feel safe and the existing fish feel like this new fish that's come in here 
isn't coming straight to take my territory or anything like that. So it's a great way uh, to you know, ease them into the tank and make both sides feel comfortable with the situation. Number four is do your research and find out what that fish is more prone to be like. You know, there's some tanks that are more prone to be more boisterous like your clown tang and that sort of thing um, than others. So definitely do your research and plan ahead and go, okay, if I want a clown tang or I want one of these, I'll probably make that my last tang purchase. Uh, I know it can be so tempting when you go into the pet shop and you're like, oh, I just want to get it there and then. But especially ones that are known for being more boisterous. I mean, personalities are always going to come into play and you might get really lucky with a really friendly one. You know, set yourself up for success. By adding in the more chilled out tangs first and then sort of progressing to the ones that are known to be more uh, aggressive and that sort of stuff. Number five is to add more than one tang at a time. So at, obviously at the beginning you can add one tang, no problem. But once you've got, you know, a really dominant tang in there, it can sometimes help. Instead of just adding one tang to add a couple or three or more um, at the same time. I know this isn't always doable, but it does help um, because all the fish's attention isn't just on one poor newcomer. It's on two or three or more uh, tangs. The so more dominant fish that you have in your tank is uh, its attention is going to be dispersed between two or three rather than one poor little tang that's just copping all of the attention. So um, that's a great way to you know disperse it. And, and then, then the dominant tang of the tank is going to tie out more quickly because it's got three lots of tangs to chase away and it'll get over it really quick. If that's not doable, then you can always try and add a tang that's bigger than your most dominant tang in the tank. Usually this helps um, because the dominant tang of the tank kind of goes, okay, you're bigger than me, you win. But as we know in the dog world, some Sometimes you're going to get the little chihuahua that's going to go after the German Shepherd. So this won't always work. And you know what? When I added in Joyce, she is way bigger than my powder blue tang. But my powder blue tang is still trying to give her a little bit of a I'm the boss of the tank. So it's very interesting. So my powder blue tang definitely has that chihuahua sort of situation going on. But yeah, it, it definitely helps. And you know what? Joyce is like, whatever, I'm huge anyway. So she does not care. So general rule of thumb is it does does help to some extent um, with the new fish being bigger than what you've already got. Number six is you can add a mirror to the side of your tank. This is an interesting one, not something I've actually done myself, but you can apparently put a mirror up on the side of the tank and the more dominant or the aggressive tank that you've got in your tank uh, will go after its own reflection and spend all of its energy going after its own reflection and completely disregard the newcomer in the tank. I've never tried this myself, so I can't speak from experience, but I've heard a lot of people having uh, success with putting a mirror up to the tank. Even if it's just to give the new fish a bit of a break, it's a great way to divert uh, the other fish's attention for a little while. Number seven is to actually remove the dominant fish from the tank for a little while. So pop it in a uh, set up tub with a filter and air bubbler and all that sort of stuff. Um, rearrange the rock work and then add it back in because tangs always have their little territories in the tank and by you moving around their rocks, usually that sort of throws them out from that section being their territory and no one's allowed near it. So, so I've heard mixed reviews on that one working uh, if you're really desperate to try and make something work and you've you know, got this really dominant fish that's um, giving every single newcomer a hard time. It's definitely something worth trying. Lastly, there are some myths about tangs out there which are just rubbish. Um, one of them being that you can't or it's impossible to add more of the same, the exact same species of tang in your tank. Say, you know, two blue tangs. They're saying, no, nah, not possible. There are so many people that do it out there. It is not impossible. And if that's something you want, then, you know, the seven things that I've mentioned are great ways to help them get along in the tank. But I hate how there's things that are claimed as, uh, you know, impossible in the saltwater hobby, because it's not. There's so many people out there that have it and do it successfully. So uh, definitely don't be discouraged. If you have a dream of having multiple yellow or purple tangs in your tank, you can absolutely do it. At the end of the day, tangs are always gonna have their little hierarchies and we need to let it happen as long as no one's getting bullied to the point of death or injury or anything like that. It's up to us to sort of manage that and to monitor it and to you know look after the little underdog, make sure they're not getting picked on too bad. Uh, but we do need to let them you know 
sorted out. Using some of those seven ways you can really set yourself up uh, for success with adding multiple tangs to your tank. As long as you've got plenty of food, places to hide, and enough room for the tangs in your tank, you shouldn't have many issues at all. But thank you so much for watching. I hope this has helped and we'll see you next time.